Thank you guys for being here. Uh, so my name is Christian and I'm here with uh, my colleague Michele to talk to you about sample rate conversion. Uh, I must confess, this talk uh, would involve some math. So if it's user warning, you know, uh, that's why I have backup for, uh, for this. Um, so uh, a little bit of a background about us. My name is Christian, uh, as you know. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I spent the past seven years working in the pro audio industry, uh, but I was more on the control side of things. So I was managing software to control uh, audio devices, uh, mainly converters actually for a company called Direct Out. I don't know if you know that. Uh, I may or may not have spent like a year or so doing uh, uh, numerical software for artificial intelligence um, applications, because you know, last year there was quite a big, quite a big uh, excitement about that topic. And so I was involved in that. That's why I have like a sort of a background in performance op optimization of stuff. Um, on the other hand, uh, Michele is very good at doing signal processing. He's actually a, a PhD student. And so uh, uh, that's why I have him here uh, to, to like help me mm, with, the, with the more mathematical side of things. Um, so what are we going to talk about? Well, uh, the, the, the topic is, is sample rate conversion. So like a brief introduction. Uh, you know that we are working with digital signals and so they are made up of samples. A sample is, is just a measurement. So you take a measurement of your wave uh, at a given point in time, and the frequency at which you take those measurements is, is your sampling frequency. And that's the, what's, what's called the, the, the sample rate of, of a signal. And that's a very important metric. Um, conversion is just the, the, the process of, of, of going from one sample rate to another one. Uh, why is this important? Well. Um, you can actually live with just uh, one single sample rate, which is usually something around 40, 48 kilohertz. Uh, but there are situations in which you, you need to actually handle more. And uh, the main important, the, the most important one, which is the, well, the, at least the one I'm more familiar with, it's, it's in the uh, like mixed environments. So when you have audio and video systems, you usually need to bridge uh, the gap between uh, those two systems uh, because usually there is a video system which is like the master and the audio system needs to be able to synchronize to it and they usually work at different frequencies. So it's like something like uh, 96 or something and 48 for the, for, for, for the other one. So, well, the, the, the frequencies are actually, the, the most important ones are the 44.1 and 48 kilohertz, and then the integer multiples. So you yeah, have like the two and the four multiples. And uh, yeah, so the next step is to understand actually what's the, what's the theory behind sample rate conversion. That's why uh, I have Michele here that will help us understand more about the math behind. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, uh, Christian, and uh, welcome alone to everyone. It's a honor to be here because uh, it's my first presentation with so many people there, so I'm quite excited. So, um, but I think Christian has uh, a little bit uh, over scared you about the math because there is not uh, that much math because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So let's go to the, to the theory behind uh, the SRC. Um, well, SRC is made of two core operations that are very simple. The first is upsampling, that is the, the process of introducing artificially a, a higher number of samples in your, in your signal. And basically a factor L upsampling is, uh, deals with introducing L adjacent sam new samples between two existing ones, so that the final sample rate is uh, increased by a factor of L. On the other hand, there is uh, the, the second core process that is downsampling, and factor M downsampling means that you keep M samples and you let just one survive, so that your uh, final sample rate is factored by uh, a factor, an integer factor M. If we combine the two operations, what you get is a factor L out of M conversion in the sample rate. Oh, so this is great, but the problem is that there are two shortcomings that are not negligible. The first one is that when you upsample a signal, 
you are introducing the spectral copies of the um, of the harmonic content of your original signal at multiples of the at integer multiples of the original frequency content in your signal. Second problem that is even enhanced by the first one is that when you downsample a signal, there's always the risk of going below the, so the very famous Shannon Nyquist limit, thus introducing aliasing. And aliasing can be audible. Aliasing, if, in, even if not audible, is a severe problem for your DSP processor. So it needs to be avoided. And to do so, we need to introduce between the two blocks a uh, low pass filtering. Low pass filtering, which ideally should limit the band of your uh, original signal to uh, the maximum expectable frequency in the signal. So uh, ideally, this should be a, a, a box shape filter. And of course, this filter um, needs to be properly designed and introduces a non negligible amount of complexity in the system. So uh, now let's move on to uh, talk about quality metrics because uh, I, I told you that uh, SRC is very simple, but when we introduce filtering, it becomes uh, uh, a matter of trade offs. So the first thing of, to take care of SRC is that it must introduce negligible aliasing. So um, this is the, the first thing. Second, there's the, um, another metric called signal to noise ratio that, that is a measure of um, the noise your converter is introducing in the, in the system. And of course, the higher the SNR, the lower the noise your converter is introducing, so the better. A third key performance indicator is the bandwidth of the SRC, the SRC that is usually measured as a percentage of the full bandwidth uh, of, the, um, of, the, of the system. And of course, this is related to the FIR filter design and uh, how you deploy it in the conversion process. Last but not least, there's the, the conversion speed. Your com you want your converter to be as fast as possible and also to handle a uh, huge, uh, huge uh, amount of uh, samples. So uh, as I told you, the, the approach I, I, I presented you uh, in, the, in the part of the filtering introduces a very high computational complexity. And this is why. Well, basically, um, we are filtering in a, in a stage in which we have the maximum amount of samples. So we are filtering at the maximum sampling frequency. And this is very inefficient because at, at the end of the day, we are then discarding some samples. Uh, so uh, an idea that comes from, from the state of the art is going to multi-rate. Multi the idea behind multi-rate is trying to, to convert your, your, uh, your data and the filter so that the filter operates at the minimum possible sample rate. This, uh, of course, needs decomposing both the signal and the, the, sh the, the filter coefficient, rearranging them so that you are working in parallel on pieces of, the, of, your, um, of your signal. And under certain conditions, you can even exchange the position of the downsampler and the upsampler so that the filter here operates really at the lowest possible sample rate. But this, of course, comes at the price that when you upsample back, you need to uh, recreate the original signal. And this is, of course, something that uh, requires uh, uh, thinking of novel algorithms. Um, so moving on, this is another strategy to, to reduce complexity that is different, because in this case, Christian told you about the, there are several uh, sample rates in audio, in audio systems. And uh, mm, if you want to exchange from one sample rate to the other, you have this uh, integer factor L and integer factor M that are quite high, typically. So the idea is trying to factorize them in uh, lower numbers and each couple of factor L and M represents a stage in this case. So uh, you can split your converter into multiple stages. Of course, here you need to uh, deploy a special filter for each stage. But at the end, this is versatile because each stage can be whatever SRC system you want. So here I leave the word to Christian again. Yeah. So now uh, for the actual fun part, uh, we decided to build our own um, SRC from scratch in, in software, of course. Um, but we, let's say, 
took things quite a bit too far. Uh, I heard someone uh, mentioning uh, Mike Acton and uh, John Blow. So this is uh, an approach close to the, let's say, end hero movement uh, to, to like build everything from scratch to get a better, uh, get a better understanding of the, of the theory behind it. So um, we <laughs> implemented our own uh, routines for, the, for computing uh, the FFTs and also the support for uh, multidimensional, uh, you should read vectors there. Tensors is just the AI uh, influence I, I got last year, so it's, but they are just vectors. Um, this turns out to be uh, quite a nice project if you want to, 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 to like descend into madness. Um, we, <laughs> we, we built everything in C++, including the FFT stuff and the memory management part for, the, for, for our building blocks. And then we added like a, a, a very small C uh, style API to be able to interoperate with Python and, and C++. As you know, like uh, mathematicians are, are very good at doing Python and MATLAB stuff, but they don't like C++. So we need, we need the, the Python stuff for, to, to make them happy. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the nice thing about this is that everything here is, is self-contained. And so uh, it turns out that you can actually run the same code also on the web using uh, WebAssembly. Um, it's just a change in the compiler instead of GCC or, or your Clang, you just put mscripten in there. Um, so to, to, to see the actual result, this is, uh, I probably need to go with this. Okay, this is an actual naive sample rate converter that works on a, on a, a single audio file. So we are going from 44.1 to 96. This is the worst conversion you can uh, make um, it takes it takes a lifetime. Well, it's 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 very not good. <laughs> but <laughs> at the end it works. I, I promise you that. The video is actually at the, to twice the the speed. So it's, it's 46 seconds to, to do a naive conversion. And uh, you can you can hear the tracks. They are uh, they are the same basically. So now let's let's do an experiment and actually visualize the complexity. Uh, the Nice thing about building your own tools for, for fun is that you can, well, do whatever you want. In this case, I, I built a, a tracer inside our like, mathematical framework. And uh, this, is, this is actually Perfetto. So we are exporting traces that are compatible with, with Perfetto and, and visualizing them. <laughs> As you can see, uh, we are spending quite a bit of time here. It's, it's 46, second, 46 seconds on, uh, on three. Fourier transforms. Um, this is, of course, madness, but it's 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 fun when you when you see you you actually you if you are a performance guy, now you have your hotspot. You know where to optimize. Um, this is the multi-rate version. Uh, this is not optimal because we we encountered some issue, issues actually, uh, but the 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 end result is actually very good. It's 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 a lot faster. And uh, the quality is actually the same, if not better. So it's, it's it's very good. Now again, for the for the visualization stuff, as you can see, the graph is is very different. So uh, now you have a lot more operations, but the there are not like very huge uh, hotspots. Uh, well, there are still very huge hotspots in terms of FFTs, but you know, um, you, you need FFTs at some point in your life. Um, we have also a bunch of like memory allocations. Mm, the nice thing here is that all the memory allocation take place in the in a, in a memory arena, so they are actually very very fast. Uh, we we decided to implement our own memory allocator because we had the time to do that. So, but but I, I don't recommend that to you. It's implementing a memory allocator in C. It, it's it's madness. You have to manage addresses, and you like at some point you start to see addresses instead of values it's 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 crazy it's it's but but it's it's a nice experience you know so now for for a small wrap up on the on the more mathematical side of things let's see some some yes, plots let, let, let me just conclude um, as you might probably not have heard any difference um, with your ears hopefully in the conversion process uh, we decided also to do some uh, uh, more uh, numerical simulation to test our converters that are actually um, displayed in different uh, scenarios the first one 
that is typical in the SRC context is that you generate a chirp, so a time-varying pure tone, and uh, you, you plot these spectrograms. In the spectrogram, you see the frequency on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. And this is the, the simple, the, 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 pre, the, um, the first version of SRC I presented you. And of course, you can see that the power is in, in, the, in the color scale. Uh, this curve um, does not show any, any blurred lines, meaning that no aliasing is, uh, is present, or, or at least it, it is very negligible. This is the, our, that figure represents the, the multi-rate and multi-stage approach we used, and we wanted also to compare the, uh, our approaches with a state-of-the-art approach that is present in the SHIPI library. Um, of course, we are deploying the same filters in the, in the, three, in the three cases, and uh, these are also the, the, the spectrum in another scenario. Here we generate a pure tone at one kilohertz, and this is the spectrum of, the, of all the signals, and this is useful to understand the signal-to-noise ratio your system adds to, to the conversion. Uh, so I, ca I think we can conclude here. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, uh, <laughs> if you like to see actually the, the, the small converter we built, it's available online. It's actually built using WebAssembly, so it's the code we use for that demo running on your browser. And if you have any questions, please let us know. We have email addresses or Discord or whatever you like. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.